Hello. I just wanted to let people know how to animate in Krita because I've heard a lot of people saying how it was really difficult and confusing. And trust me, it is. But once you go through it like one or two times, it gets a lot simpler and you have to watch a bunch of tutorials that teach you different parts. So I'm just going to try and cover everything in this one video. So just open up Krita. The first thing you want to do is get out what they call dockers. I just called them toolbars, but uh, that's in settings. You can find it right here. You just want to get the animation one. And normally when this pops up, it's down here and intimidating and everything. So instead of having it be all scary and intimidating, you just have to click the name uh, and drag it off. And then you can just scale it down. So it's nice and small and less terrifying than it once was. The second docker you want is the timeline. That one you can just plop where the animation one used to be in, it's a lot simpler. And so, gonna make a new document. They have the animation templates, but that's a lot of layers and it jumps you straight in the deep end, so I'm just going to start with a normal document. Both work. So for this, we need a new layer. It starts you off with just the white layer. So you have the new layer, and a lot of tutorials are just like, oh, for onion skin, just click the little light bulb, and you look, and there's no light bulb anywhere to be found. And then, like, a half hour into tutorials, they'll be like, oh yeah, you've just got to do this thing. But the thing is, with Krita, you see this nice big onion button on the uh, animation docker. Um, also, I gesture air quotes every time I have to say dockers because I think it's a dumb name. Anyways, that does not turn on and off the onion skins. It turns on and off the docker for the onion skins. So normally it has all these little bars that look more like this, just getting smaller on each side. And this is probably my favorite part of the onion skins out of any program because it's so, what's the word? Uh, customizable in a way. It's easy to change the color of what you want the different frames to be. But for this, we're going to actually have to get the onion skins to turn on for you to actually realize what that is. Uh, so to turn on the onion skin, first you have to make a new frame. And that button's right here. And you can see now you have the light bulb. The light bulb only appears on layers that have frames. So if you have just a background that's a still image for the entire thing, like if I wanted this to just be like, I need a darker color or a bigger brush, hold up. Just like, you know, a wonderful piece of art. Here I draw a very architecturally sound crooked house. This is how I always draw houses, I'm not good at architecture. This is why nothing has backgrounds for me. Draw sun. Whole suns are cool, so they're required to have sunglasses and cool smiles. Rays. Mini rays. So, even though that this is going to play for the entire animation, it's not going to change because it's only in Creative Mind one frame or one picture. But it won't have that light bulb until you add a frame. Adding frames before you draw is also good because sometimes it gets rid of whatever you've drawn when you add a new frame. But this is helpful because now if you have like 30 frames, you'll know exactly which ones have animation on them and which ones don't. And this is also great because unlike programs like uh, Fire Alpaca and Photoshop, which use each layer as an individual frame, all your frames are in one layer, so that's fantastic because it can be like, okay, so this is going to be just the rough animation, and then you have another layer that's going to be like the clothing animation, and that makes things a lot more helpful. 
So you can just click and drag uh, frames to wherever you want them to be. And for the onion skin, you just gotta click this little light bulb so the rays start coming off it. It also shows up over here. So now if I go and draw just... Oh! Creator crashed on me. That happens sometimes. Probably tried to do too many things at once. A little too quickly. But the great part about Krita is that... Oh, I already saved these. Like, here you can see it has a good autosave. I just didn't do enough stuff for it to autosave. So, I'm going to recreate this beautiful work of art that we had. Just the whole... Little hill, cool sunglass sun. I'm gonna move these over here. The thing that probably crashed it was me trying to move a frame, and it was confused because I didn't prompt it first. Because normally, when you move a frame, you have to, oops, my bad, remember that thing about making frames first? I always do this too, I accidentally forget that there's a bottom layer. But uh, to move a frame, you usually have to click on it and then drag it. But because it was already clicked on already, it probably got confused because machines are machines and none of them are perfect yet. So now... You can just go in and draw on it. I have a lot of other programs open so it's a little laggy. Probably should have closed those but I'm going to give them a nice fancy undercut because undercuts are nice. So now if we go over to a new layer and turn on the onion skin, make a new frame. This is what it looks like when you have a frame that comes before the current one you're on. Uh, I changed it to a, an orangey goldish color because I never draw with that and I like drawing with green and red sometimes for just like this should actually be looking like this, like a correcting thing. So when I have red and green on the current frame as well as before and after onion skin, never helpful. And I never draw or at least animate in purple or an orangey gold, so that's what the onion skins are going to be. And pretty sure you can just make it, yeah, you can make it the original color too with the tint. But the coolest thing is up here you can show how opaque or how like transparent the onion skins are for 10 frames in either direction, which none of the other programs I've used so far, and I've used Photoshop, Toon Boom, um, Krita, Fire Alpaca, Open Tunes. I think Open Tunes might do that, but it might not. Uh, but this is the only one that's this nice and this customizable. It's just a pain to get to. But now, if I just just gonna do. Real derpy animation. So, when you have a frame that comes after in the timeline than your current frame, it will be the other color. So when I add a frame in between, you'll have one gold and one kind of purpley. I like it all the way up because it's nice and very vibrant. Then you can just go in and easily in between things. Follow arcs is always good. Make sure they still have all their features. And so everything's clean looking over here. You can scroll through the timeline and 
Now comes exporting your beautiful animation. Also, you can change uh, how fast it's playing and the frame rate itself. I want this to end on frame six. And so even though it shows past this, if you play it, it'll only go up until frame six. So, if we go up to file and export, uh, or render animation, we get this. You can change, the top part's the image sequence. And what Krita does is it exports all the frames, and then if you want it to be like a GIF or a video, then it makes those frames into that. So first it has to render the image sequence, and then it changes it to the actual moving image. So you can just name that just Wiggle. When you forget your caps lock is on. You choose what file format. Well, that's usually if you just want the image sequence and you don't want uh, the... Or when you want the image sequence but you don't want it to be deleted afterwards. And I always say delete image sequence. And when it's only the image sequence, then you can choose the vast amount of different formats. But when you render the video and delete the sequence, it doesn't let you do anything. You choose the render location. And I always say delete the image sequence afterwards because when I have the GIF for the video, I don't need the images to go with it because I just wanted the video. And you say when you want it to end, it usually will follow what you say over there, but it's always good to double check. And down here you have these file formats to choose from. I usually stick with the whole MPEG-4 and GIF. The Krita can't export GIF transparently yet. That's probably the only time I'd export the actual image sequence itself. Uh, because PNGs have the transparency to it, so you can just go to a GIF maker online that's free. I use Easy GIF because it's super nice and free and customizable, and you can add, like, the nice impact text if you want to make a meme. Because, a. Hey. But, uh, you can go in, the file name will usually match the same location that you have the render location if it doesn't say specifically. To change any of these, you just hit the little ellipses or little file things. And I'm just going to also name this wiggle. And for the FFmpeg, you're going to have to download that and tell Krita where you have put it. I didn't realize this little bar existed, so no matter how many times I downloaded it and exported it and did everything with it, I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. And that's because you have to click the little file thing and tell it exactly that for the specific um, file location for it, where mine's in the local C disk, you have to go to FFmpeg folder. Then you go to bin, and then you click on the FFmpeg, and then it will pop up the file location here, and then you can just click OK. And you just wait for a bit. And if we just go to the desktop and look for Wiggle, we should have a beautiful movie, if it will play. It's probably too short seeing how it's only six. Oh, it's because it opened in here. I want it to open with... Probably quick time. Quick time is usually nicer. Unless it's just messing up on me for no reason. Weird. Hold up, I'll be right back. So, 
for some reason it's just not exporting for me. When this happens, you can easily just export the frames and just pop them into a image to MP4 converter and you can add whatever audio you have on it. And I forgot completely because it's so small and out of the way and I never really used it that much in Krita. Uh, to add audio to a animation, it's way over here, this itty bitty little thing. And why it's so small, I don't know, I wish it was a lot bigger. And here you can open audio, mute it, and remove the audio. Over here you have a lot of options for the timeline itself. That gets a little tricky when you have multiple layers on the same, um... Uh, on the timeline at the same time because it gets confused as to where it wants to put everything but it's a drawing program that also has animation so the animation stuff isn't as clean as everything else in, Cre in Krita but uh, EasyGIF also has a nice I have it bookmarked so I can get there easily but you can easily just make things into GIFs and then make the GIFs into MP4s and it's just something that's quick and easy to do so when you run into problems like mine where it just won't export for some reason why? I don't know uh, then you can just quickly do that and uh, it has to do something with the encoding, so it might have been when I tried to reinstall it or retell it where to put it. it might have gotten confused on that. I don't know, but the frames themselves work perfectly fine. You can see the beautiful art pieces, but when it tries to go into a video, no idea. If you know the answer, comment below. That would be super helpful. Also, if you have any questions on Krita itself that you need answered, you can also ask below. If I get enough questions, I'll do a follow-up video on trying to answer some of those questions. I'll also try and answer them when you comment so you're just not left hanging, just wondering. But yeah, hopefully this helps you at least a little bit, but... If you like this, I don't know, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, I don't normally do tutorial videos, but uh, someone asked for one, so I'm like, yeah, I can do it. Because I had a lot of trouble with other tutorial videos for animating in Krita. So I just wanted to do something short, quick, that would really just answer questions that at least I especially found in different tutorials. I'm rambling at this point, so I'm just gonna say bye and see you guys next time.